I'm going to talk about uh, CSF pressure disturbance. Uh, usually, we are talking about uh, intracranial hypotension. Uh, few people talk about intracranial hypertension. This is a uh, pseudotumor cerebri. That's an old term. Uh, it happens in uh, young obese ladies that have headache. For example, this patient is uh, from literature. It's a 32-year-old uh, with high uh, CSF pressure of 45 milli uh, centimeter uh, water water pressure, with tortuous uh, nerve and dilated nerve sheaths, and uh, with optic nerve indentation into the eyeball, with flattening of the uh, eyeball at the site of the nerve head insertion. Same thing here in this case. Uh, that's my case. The nerve is protruding into the eyeball and then the ophthalmologist saw uh, papadema and distension of the nerve sheath. By the way, the intracranial portion of the nerve are unremarkable. Both, both this patient have empty cella configuration, high CSF pressure, empty cella, loss of peripheral visions. Next, I'm going to talk about uh, Monroe-Kelly hypothesis. It basically says that the uh, cranial compartment is incompressible and the volume inside the cranium is a fixed volume and the cranium is con uh, constituent uh, blood CSF and brain tissue create a state of volume equilibrium. So any changes in one of the compartments uh, must be con compensated by a decrease in the volume of uh, the other two. Um, this is a um, now we're moving into um, intracranial hypotension just opposite the previous one is um, the overall pressure is high. It's not a blood pressure high. It's the overall pressure in the skull is high. But uh, this case is intracranial. The, the uh, pressure is low. Why is low? Because of there's a, a hole in the spine that uh, CSF is leaking out. So the whole uh, the CSF pressure is dropping. So the vein and the brain parenchyma have to compensate according to the hypothesis so the veins are dilated uh, here and then the brain is shifting down and then actually there is a acquire Chiari 1 malformation uh, kind of is plugging the hole in the foramen of magnum so somehow reduce the uh, pressure difference between supratentor uh, between the um, intracranial compartment and the spinal compartment and also you can see a swollen uh, pituitary gland which I see uh, frequently in uh, patient with intracranial hypotension. Uh, the everything on this page is a literature a case about intracranial hypotension. For example, this patient have a large pituitary gland and be swollen, uh, larger than before, and the swollen uh, epidural venous plexus, the black, uh, the white area, is so the vein that enhances the post contrast saturated T1 images. Um, another patient that have a uh, CSF leak, they have a dilated epidural vein in the dorsal aspect of the uh, thoracic spine. The black area is the dilated vein, not CSF flow. Um, this is a patient that with a ventral uh, epidural uh, venous plexus dilatation. The black line are the veins, not CSF flow. And on sagittal, they are the dilated veins. This patient have dilated vein intracranial, uh, uh, with intracranial hypotension uh, and CSF leak. After treatment, the vein is normalized to this size. Uh, so, and also you can see the CSF sac is smaller than before. Uh, uh, before the, the patches, and then after this, the hole is sealed as the CSF uh, space is regained. Same thing here: the drape, drape, a uh, curtain drape over sign of ve ventral venous uh, epi epi uh, plexus uh, dilatation. Same thing here. I wish they are all the intracranial hypotension are all easy like this. This is a patient who had a thoracotomy with uh, lung uh, resection, and I guess they nick the uh, dura, and then you can see the CSF leak directly out of the uh, uh, thoracic spinal canal through this little uh, defect out into the pleural cavity, and the CSF uh, cisternogram uh, that you can literally see, uh, literally see the uh, leaking radioactive tracer to the right side. This is a uh, APV view of patient's spinal cord, uh, spinal canal is here. This is right side, this is right side axial view. 
or it's, it's, it's MRI sometimes see the leak. Uh, you see here the watery density, a uh, watery signal on the right side, and then uh, normal fat suppressed signal on the left side. Uh, and this is uh, another patient. Uh, th this is one patient. This is a second patient. They have leak, CSF leak in this region. You can see the uh, CSF leak right here. Uh, or you can literally see the CSF leak through bilateral nerve root uh, on each side. We rarely see that. Uh, it's very difficult. For example, uh, this patient, 55-year-old uh, um, with history of multiple sclerosis in April uh, 10, 2008. This is a normal MRI study for CSF leak. It just happened to be the patient has multiple sclerosis for MRI uh, to evaluate with the, the um, MS plaque. This is normal. Look at the uh, pituitary size and the size and the overall shape of the uh, the brain. Look at the uh, corpus callosum is not compressing on the internal cerebral vein, and uh, you can see the there's normal uh, CSF space between the midbrain and pons and the uh, supracellular cistern as well uh, distended, uh, and there's no vein that dilatation uh, along the dura because I'm going to show you. This is the um, in October 16, 2008, patient developed orthostatic uh, headache. Uh, basically, a headache starts when sitting or upright. Uh, the headache uh, resolved uh, when she is lying flat. Patient who had dizziness for three weeks, uh, low CSF pressure was uh, obtained uh, was noticed on a lumbar puncture on September 26, 2008. That was a lumbar puncture to diagnose hypotension, not, not, probably not causing the leak because the symptoms start before that. No changes in the multiple sclerosis at the time and uh, you can see the pituitary is swollen, the corpus callosum is pressing down against this internal cerebral vein, the ventral epidural um, uh, plexus is swollen and demonstrating enhancement of the dura and uh, you can see enhancement along the uh, frontal, uh, frontal fossa I can see the, all the enhance, uh, enhancement and swelling of the dural venous, and, and also develop a subdural fluid collection. They, or you, can, you can call that hygroma, you can call that uh, fluid collection, uh, and also the, the infratentoral dura are also enhancing compared to previous one. This is before, after, before, after. Look at the pituitary, before, after, Look at the uh, epi uh, internal cerebral vein after. Um, look at the epidural venous plexus before, after. Look at the uh, subdural hygroma before, nothing there. Now it's there. And then dura, uh, dura a starting enhancement. Before, after, even the infratentorial enhancement of the dura is new since before after it's very subtle that's why I'm showing you back and forth comparison you can also see the uh, pre uh, pre pontine cistern and uh, perimezin perimezin encephalic cistern are all compressed because of the whole brain is sagging down and also the supracellular cistern is, is pretty much gone you can see the uh, See, it's, it's gone. Why? Because of the brain is sucking down. Look at the brain uh, before, after, before, after. The brain is sagging down, okay? Okay. Uh, this is uh, October 16, 2008. There was slight dilatation of cervical spine epidural vein. Otherwise, the uh, uh, entire MRI, spine, MRI study of the spine is normal. So this patient, we have no target for that, for any particular CSF leak. The ve venous structure is slightly dilated. Uh, it's not that dilated. So um, this is before, after, treated with epidural blood patch, and patient re said that seems to got better quickly. Uh, that is uh, uh, this this uh, improvement is uh, noticeable and uh, didn't recur. In this case was uh, four years ago. Now I just called patient um, didn't recur. But it still have smoldering uh, uh, headache on, off and on since uh, caffeine definitely helped. So this is, by the way, this is uh, uh, intracranial hypotension. This is another 
MRI study about uh, a year later for MS follow-up back to normal again. Before, intracranial hypertension resolved. Before, intracranial hypertension resolved. So, um, next case, uh, patient. This patient, 65-year-old male, was uh, used a wood chipper to fix something, and uh, the cord jerked and pulled the patient's arm, and then the, the patient, the whole body felt a jolt, according to him. And then uh, a week later, he developed a, a orthostatic headache, and pr just like the previous patient, mostly in the posterior aspect of the head. Uh, so he he contributed to this event as for the headache, but uh, the doctor can, don't think that's related. Anyway, the uh, same thing in supratentorial and infratentorial dural thickening and enhancement. This one uh, doesn't have the subdural hygroma, but you can see the uh, um, supracellular cistern is decreased. The swollen is relatively swollen. Uh, the sp uh, the pituitary gland maybe upper limit of normal, and not that swollen. The epidural vein is definitely swollen, and um, the uh, the corpus callosum is definitely pressing on the uh, internal cerebral vein. Uh, so n not as dramatic as the previous case. Um, this patient had a large volume 40 milliliter epidural blood patch at L2 L3 level in the lumbar spine. Uh, better within a day. Uh, never ha uh, the headache never returned for since uh, last time was treated about uh, three four years ago. So, the, by the way, this is a patient, same patient's axial, and you can see the dural thickening, uh, the dural swelling. Thickening, swelling, or edema, they're all the same thing. Uh, a third patient, a uh, patient that is 47 year old female, orthostatic headache, especially when bent over tying her shoes. Uh, same finding, you can see the dural, dural enhancement, thickening. Usually you don't see the dura enhancement that well, both supratentorial and infratentorial, and the swollen of the pituitary gland, and uh, lack of uh, effacement of the uh, paramesencephalic cistern, and uh, maybe KRE1 de uh, developing now, acquired KRE1 malformation. And then we can see on this uh, high resolution uh, MR study of the thorac uh, cervical thoracic and uh, uh, lumbar spine demonstrate multiple nerve roots sleeve diverticuli. You can see them, there are big one here, the one here, here, they're every level. Um, only one renal cyst. Uh, you can see the pituitary gland swollen, but no uh, focal collection, fluid collection in the spinal uh, canal. So basically a week or two later, no change, still swollen gland, so uh, pituitary gland and carry one and uh, epidural vein descension. Uh, so we did I uh, see the CSF cisternogram. Uh, I reversed the uh, MRI study just to f uh, match this cisternogram. It's pretty much like a light up like a Christmas tree you know, with a lot of branches. Each branch is a nerve root sleeve diverticulum. For example, this one's big one right here. Thick one, nothing there. Miss nothing here. A medium one, a medium one. You can see a match er every level on um, MRI finding and uh, cisternogram finding. Um, so initially, we didn't see any leak. Uh, later, we find a possible leak here. Later, we uh, uh, called the patient back for next day to, did, uh, to do a spec CT to so localize the, the uh, tracer. Turned out that it localized to the renal pelvis. So if that also, if that's a fake out. So we don't know where exactly the patient had a CSF leak. So uh, it's on the uh, right side. Uh, I'm sorry, which side? Uh, this is the left side. So we tried to inject the uh, L two, three level on the left side could do for trial injection, 50 milliliter, didn't help. Uh, patient uh, kind of a, uh, frustrated and went to a tertiary referral center. And they pretty much uh, look at the previous studies and plan to do a CD monogram and work up for connective tissue disease. Basically to see whether the patient's uh, connective tissue are too loose. Loose means uh, such as Marfan syndrome, uh, Erlos-Danlos syndrome, but this patient just have one renal cyst in a 40-some year old lady. That uh, could be just normal variant, not out of the extraordinary. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. 
this patient has a uh, uh, 65-year-old bilateral subdural hematoma. Uh, why the why hematoma? Because of the fluid is not as pure as CSF. The CSF lack here is uh, uh, gray. Uh, one side is bigger, the other side is also a, a smaller one somewhere. Uh, on this picture, it's hard to tell. There's one, uh, maybe there's one on this side. Uh, uh, the pituitary is slightly swollen. Uh, other finding is not that obvious. Just this, just the um, uh, subdural collection slash hematoma. Not not much venous en enlargement. And uh, the patient had a normal spine survey, MRI, no, uh, actually, uh, MRI normal, but uh, cisternogram study that showed a possible left side L2-3 leak. Uh, so the um, patient had a uh, epidural, epidural blood patch injection, 20 milliliter. The patient said that it helped a little better than the worst time, but still have uh, orthostatic high, per, uh, high potential. The patient had a history of lumbar and cervical spine surgery before this uh, event, so we don't know whether that's uh, from the surgical side or where is the leak from. So that one is uh, unresolved. Uh, this, uh, the next patient is a um, bedbound uh, with severe MS, multiple sclerosis patient. Uh, why we, uh, the reason we can see it because they have multiple MRI to follow up their multiple sclerosis. Um, this is before the study, uh, before this f uh, study and this is after the study. Both are normal, at least for the uh, intracranial hypotension concern. The pituitary are normal, but you know, at the time of the, this MRI, the pituitary is swollen. Um, the bilateral subdural um, thickening no collection yet, they're thickening more on the right, and then the left side is also slightly thickened. Uh, they shouldn't have no symptom, and did do both before or after the study. And during the study, the patient have no symptom, never had any symptom. Um, I guess it's hard to tell, um, you have, have this finding without symptom, but I guess patient is bed bound, so never really stand up, so it's hard to tell. So there's this uh, uh, algorithm for working up of uh, spontaneous intracranial hypotension. Um, this, uh, this is an algorithm that I got from uh, a AJR journal. So basically you try conservative therapy. Uh, if no res response, then uh, contra uh, do MRI. Uh, if no MRI is contraindicated, do MRI uh, myelogram. But you can go through the uh, steps. Uh, but the bottom line is it's hard to tell, hard to find this uh, uh, CSF leak. So if you uh, randomly uh, treat them with lumbar epidural blood patch, the large volume tend to work better. Uh, with the 40 milliliter tend to work better, but patients don't like it because it could cause pain. And uh, but uh, from my limited experience, they work better than the 20 milliliter uh, uh, patch. Uh, but uh, they have less uh, patient complain less of less pain with a lower volume uh, patch.